Something I did, that I didn't add at the beginning of this that I'm going to have to, um, I guess I'll edit it in, and I'll even keep the part in with me saying that I'm editing the shit in. Fuck y'all. Um, everything that we say during this, <laughs> everything that we say during this video is our opinion. Yes, we do research on a lot of things, but we can't speak, you know, for the corporations or for the majority. You know what I mean? We speak for ourselves. That is all. All right. For the groups, we speak for ourselves. Right. Yeah, we can't speak for the groups. We speak for. Well, I speak for. I speak for. That's all you got. I speak for me, bro. For me, that's all. My PlayStation just dinged. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> welcome to the first episode of Elevated Minds, where we talk about current events and controversial topics that no one else wants to talk about. Uh, I am your host, or the moderator, I guess, for this event, Elevate Sora. Uh, I guess you can go to facebook.com slash Elevate Sora, and you can see all of my content there. Currently with me, I have down here below my counterpart, whose URL is also facebook.com slash Shadown404. Uh, you can also catch his content on YouTube, where he does the most retarded of videos, Yes, I can say retarded, because this is not Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything to say? Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and also <Sorry>. with me, <laughs> and also with me, I have uh, a longtime friend who I play video games with. He is trying to become a Twitch streamer. I think you're becoming a Twitch streamer. Is that what you're doing, Twitch? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm working on it. Yeah, I don't know why. You need to cancel that shit hella quick. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, the goat. Black metal, what, 92? I'm going to just go with black metal. Yeah, that's it. Black metal. All right, so for today's podcast, we got a couple topics of discussion. We're going to try and keep this short, as short as possible. I don't want to make this long and drawn out. So uh, we're going to try and talk about each topic for about 15 to 20 minutes, right? When someone's talking, let them get their point across, and then you can get your point across. All right? Yes? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Try and keep it civil. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So, first topic I guess we're going to go with is Twitch streaming, or streaming in general. Uh, we were talking about this earlier. We have a friend of ours who is currently a Twitch streamer, and, uh, you know... Needless to say, he's been struggling for a while. He's been streaming there for years. He's been streaming on Twitch for years, and he has a few concurrent viewers, but he hasn't been growing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but he hasn't been growing. I know. I just, I just tossed him. I yeeted him under the bus hella hard. I understand that. Whatever. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Yeeted him a little bit. <laughs> Oh, no, you yeeted the fuck out of me. <laughs> you said he hasn't been growing. I'm like, yeah, my man. Well, he has. I mean, it's, it's the truth. All right, so. He went from 164 followers to 200 in three years. This in three years. Ridiculous. All right. And, and, and that's part of the issue that I find with Twitch streaming. All right. The, the platform itself is so saturated. Granted, uh, the same can be said for YouTube. Not so much for Facebook or Mixer. Because they just started. But the same can be said for YouTube. All right, The platforms are so saturated with people that have been there for years. That you just coming up. You're never going to get noticed. Because everybody's automatically going to these big streamers that everyone knows around the world. So how are you supposed to get your name out there? Unless you do some like dramatic shit that you know. Maybe you'll get seen when you do it. Like, like who? <laughs> you can't. You you can't even. With time to fritter away. Right. I mean, or or if, or if you're like one of those IRL streamers that they have, and you have cleavage in assets, I guess, then you can get big easily because people like Raj Patel will follow or find you, or someone that that watches Raj Patel will find you and send you his way, and then all now all of a sudden you got all the clout in the world. Like, I don't understand that platform. Twitch, 
I really don't get it. They have no love for their yeah, smaller streamers. They have no love for their smaller streamers at all, right? They ban their smaller streamers for the tiniest of things that their larger streamers do all of the time. There are things that you see big streamers do all of the time, and they get away with it because they have, they have the clout like that. They, they bring in the money. They bring in the revenue for Twitch so they can do all of those shocking and all-moment things. But when you're just a nobody at the bottom of the directory, you know, you just get shit out of the back end. You know what I mean? Do, do you really not know why, though? Explain it to me. Come on, like... Explain it to if me. We're, if we're being real about it, <laughs> if we're being real about it, like, it's always been... It's been the way of the world for a minute that, like, if you got a begging body, I'm not going to say big ass... <laughs> like, nah, anyway, you can say it, because that shit true. That shit if true. You got, if you if got you a got fat a, ass a and big and ass you, titties, that's the truth. <laughs> if you if you've got the ass and titties though, the majority of the world's men are fucking. I'm not gonna call nobody a beta male, but there's a lot of fucking incels in the world. There's a lot of motherfuckers out there that have never got a stitch of pussy in their life. <laughs> they fucked like two or three people, maybe. And both of those times, the person didn't want to come back afterwards. So they've literally, they can count on one hand how many times they've had sex. And these guys are so turned on by just the idea of the female form that when you get someone with the, with the female form that they actually desire, of course you're going to be huge. There's a bunch of them. That's like me being huge to rabbits. All I got to do is bring a carrot. <laughs> but I, I, I think that's, that's another point right there, right? It's shocking to me that Twitch allows some of the behavior that we see from their partnered streamers. All right? Twitch is a platform where you can be 13 years of age and you can make an account and you can go online and you can watch all of this stuff. All right? It's pretty much softcore porn they show on their site from these partnered streamers. And not even all of them are partnered streamers. Some of them are, are, are about to be partnered streamers or, or looking to be partnered streamers. And... They get away with and doing their content. the, th and that's their content. Their content is their body. The majority of their content is their body. Body painting, is, body painting's an art if you do it the right way. It's not done the right way on Twitch, at all. Ever, <laughs> ever. Quick, my tits are out. Now there's, flash me with paint. <laughs> there's a handful of people that I can vouch for on Twitch that I that I can say, when they do art, they're in it for the art. Maybe. Two people. <laughs> Maybe two people. That's about it. But the rest of the time... Fair. The rest of the time is just softcore porn. It's softcore porn, and I don't understand it. Because, I mean, technically, you don't even have to be 13 years of age to make a Twitch account. Anybody can fake that shit. You can say whatever age... You can say you're whatever... You can claim to be an age, and you're not really that age. You know what I mean? No one does that. Just, Hashtag just, golden corral. <laughs> just think about how, <laughs> just think about how, like that one. how uh, Ninja got big, right? Look at all the Ninja's fans. They're little kids, tiny kids, little They're kids. Children. When you go to, when you go to, when well, he's not a part of Twitch anymore. Now he's with Mixer, D Live Mixer, whichever. He's wherever but, has been. Look at I. <laughs> oh, wherever. But when you went. To TwitchCon, when I went to TwitchCon, what, two years ago, and Twitch was there, his bus was surrounded by little kids. Surrounded by little kids. His merchandise bus. He wasn't in the bus. Wasn't nobody, I, I pray to God wasn't nobody expecting to see Ninja in that little rundown bus that he had sitting on the corner of the boulevard. Because he wasn't going to be in that bit. <laughs> he ain't there. And so everybody was there to buy merchandise and hopefully see Ninja. And he was all like, like what, 10, 11 years old? Maybe 9? Younger? Maybe. Maybe. But like I was saying to uh, our friend earlier, I'm not going to put his name on blast, I guess. I've, I've talked so much shit already, I guess. I, I, that's the least I can do because he's not even here to defend himself. If he was here, then I guess, you know, we could take this another route. Uh, I don't see small streamers growing at all on Twitch or YouTube as a platform at all. Because it's going to be hard for you to start out getting a fan base. You can't get concurrent viewers that easily. 
because it's too saturated with larger streamers. Uh, your best bet will be to go to a brand new platform that people are just starting to uh, notice and get used to. And, you know, there aren't any, you know, go-to guys on those platforms yet. So that gives you space to grow and, and expand your, your horizons, if you would, and make whatever type of content you want to make. You know what I mean? Like, I think, right. I think what's happening for you is kind of, at least in your situation and your position, what you're really looking for is like somewhere where you don't have to compromise your integrity just to grow. Yes. I mean, it, it should be that way for everybody. You shouldn't have to pander to an audience or to a corporation that doesn't have your best interest at heart. That's fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying. So if, if you know, me, as th now that I'm uh, recording for Facebook, live streams coming soon, I have room to grow there because, number one, I have family and friends on That's Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I have family and friends on Facebook, right? So I already have a, a, a base audience and people that will watch me. How do I know this? Because I asked them. I literally, you saw the post, uh, Wolf. I put the post out. I said, hey, if I started doing this on this platform, would you would you guys support me? And every and and an um, abundance of people were like, yeah, start doing it. We'll support you. Right. So I'm on a, a brand new platform, and I already have a concurrent fan base of people that not only will watch me, but their family and friends. So you know. It's not going to be a bunch of trolls in the chat room at first. And then that gives you room to grow from there. You start your stream starting off with uh, uh, family and friends watching you so you can get used to being in front of a camera as much as you need to, right? You start to talk in front of them. You start to get used to, to doing your thing, talking your spiel. And then the other viewers just start piling in, you know? But then you can't forget the, the playbook, as Stone Mountain would call it. <laughs> The yeah. five essentials to streaming. I don't know, man. That's just me. That's that's me. I've been. I think I've been talking I, for, for like the last thirteen minutes. Yeah, you have. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm gladly, you know, I'm gonna I'm take the mic for a sec. <laughs> Fucking, it's just like it's one of those. It's one of those things being a streamer where like it'll almost aggravate you. But I stand by one thing really in this situation, as you described it. Fucking. Being jumped by trolls is a part of nature. Well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying it's not gonna happen. To right. Weed the weak ones out. Right. It, it's gonna happen. You're gonna get trolled. Sometimes you're gonna get trolled by your friends. You know how many times I've been on one of Aston's YouTube videos and been like, "Oh, you ass!" <laughs> it's, it's not just because it's facts. It's because it's funny as shit. Yeah, I mean, you tell somebody, comments on YouTube, bro. Your page. Part of nature. Yeah. I take YouTube yeah, comments like, it, it's very lightly, and. Uh, for anybody who's ever watched any of my videos on Facebook or YouTube, at the end of my descriptions, uh, my description, I, I always put, you might not like this video, but at least you gave me the view. Because at the end of the day, that's all that counts to me. <laughs> that's all that counts to me, bro. The view, the what like, the, the comment. Say, you clicked on my face. That's what I'm saying, bro. You clicked on it. That's it. That's all that you counts. Clicked you me. clicked on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, black metal, you got anything to add, or you just you just chilling in the background for now? That man just smiling um, weird as shit. I mean, <laughs> I mean, for me, this guy. I mean, for me, it's um me wanting to get into that world of um you know whether it be streaming or uh, um a, a small platform podcast or something like that of that nature. Right. I've seen um, the oversaturation. I've seen um a lot of rewashed and reused and, and repackaged uh topics that are that are being killed over and over again people using the same stuff and because these people are uh you know who they are they get the views and i and i respect that that's part of the game you know what i mean some of these people have built that platform and some people have followed the coattail of others and were given a platform and uh i just i just feel like uh I just feel like um, the saturation in the in the market of of 
putting information out there and having people, you know, that want to be heard to get their words out there and be heard from people is 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 it's ridiculous. And it's um it's discouraging, you know what I mean, to know that this is what I have to deal with in order to get into the market and stuff like that, you know. But I, I also understand, you know, on the other spectrum that, you know, they did what they had to do to get where they are. So, I mean, that's a part of life, you know what I mean? That's a part of life. So that's understood. But, you know, it it's just annoying to me to see people that I know that really have a passion and a, and a drive and they should be heard and need to be heard. And there is somebody there that, that will hear their story, you know, and, and it, it'll help them in life. And uh, to see those people get discouraged and, uh, you know, turn their back on something that they've they've had a vision for for so long, you know, including myself, it's, it's, it's disheartening and it kind of makes me want to, you know, not do it, you know, but... You're hitting my soul. My take on it. You just hit me in the soul. Ugh, I felt that. I'm telling you it's right true. now, it's a bunch of people in the comments right now typing out how bitch made we are. Um, all right, it's so a so in the comments right now, like so, and he's like, "Oh, well, if you really want to be a streamer, then you should have passion. You should be happy to get all those things. You should." Be. It's one guy in the comments right now trying to act like he is super grateful for his fucked up life. <laughs> That's big. Fat. Well, all right. Guaranteed. So uh, big fat. <laughs> and he okay. got at least three pimples on his back. Ugh. Ugh. And scar tissue yeah. on his thigh. Uh. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> scar tissue on his thigh. How you getting? Fr you're getting fried. You don't even know it yet because we're still making the video. I don't even know you, bitch. And I'll toast you. <laughs> you can get these flames, boy. <laughs> oh my god! Now. What's our ne what's our next topic, man? We go. <laughs> these people are gonna think we're lunatics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next topic. Uh, something that I did, that I didn't add at the beginning of this that I'm gonna have to. Um, I guess I'll edit it in, and I'll even keep the part in with me saying that I'm editing the shit in. Fuck y'all. Um, everything that we say during this. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that we say during this video is our opinion. Yes, we do research on a lot of things, but we can't speak, you know, for the corporations or for the majority. You know what I mean? We speak for ourselves. That is all. all right. For the groups. We speak for ourselves. Yeah, we can't speak for the groups. We speak for... Well, I speak for... I speak for... That's all you got. I speak for me, bro. For me, that's all. My PlayStation just dinged. All right. The next topic is going to be the next-gen consoles that are coming out. All right. So we got uh, the PlayStation 5 versus the Xbox Series X. Uh, and who you think would dominate between the next generation or uh, who do you think one of them is going to fail or do you think one of them is going to succeed? All right. Um. So me personally, hold I, your ass, hold your market. ass, hold your ass. <laughs> I ain't done. <laughs> I did that shit on purpose too. All right. So a PS5 and Xbox Series X go head to head as we look at which is the better games, services, and specs. All right. So I don't know if you know this, but uh, there was a press conference last month. April was last month. Last month, where Xbox and Microsoft, or Sony and Microsoft. I said Xbox and Microsoft had a Sony and Microsoft uh, showed off the specs for their consoles for their respective consoles and gave, I guess, tech heads their their little spiel about you know which one's more powerful and everything. All right, and I have the specs right here in front of me. Uh, it's a bunch of gibberish to me that I most likely won't understand. There's a couple of things that I do understand, obviously, like memory and processors. Uh, the difference between the two, obviously, I'm going to say PlayStation's winning in the memory category with uh, 4,448 wait, 448 gigabytes, but the Xbox has 56 gigabytes. So obviously, I'm going to say PlayStation's winning in that category. All right. But when it comes down to it, we need to know. The guy. When it comes down to it, we're just going to talk about which console we think is going to be more superior when it releases. 
that's a that's a yeah that's a good topic to discuss because you was real deal reading the fucking manual and shit just now. That well, I'm not. It's not the manual. <laughs> it's not the manual, but uh, I, mean, I, I, I have I have like the discussions from the press conferences right here. So I have like you know all of the specs and shit from both consoles. All right. I feel you, but you've been talking for a minute now. It's I'm all been boring. So that's crazy. I'll go ahead and crack a joke real quick. That's crazy. All I'm saying is the only way the new Xbox is going to outsell the new PlayStation is if Elon Musk kid makes friends with like 50 of them and they run away together. That's it. Yeah. There is it's... no other method. Elon Musk kid must eventually learn to speak robot, which he will, and run away with it. <laughs> speak robot. All right, so. There was a little controversy. Give him a robot name. Sure. There was there was a little controversy about two months ago where people were saying that uh, the PlayStation is going to fail because there are the PlayStation is talking about being able to have uh, 4K gameplay, right? But the couple, the handful of games that have already been announced for the PlayStation Five are not compatible with 4K gameplay, all right? And that, and people are saying. Uh, in the in the test runs or trial runs of the PlayStation Five, people would boot up a game and the system would crash. It could stab me every time I turn it on. I still buy it over an Xbox. <laughs> What's wrong with the Xbox? <laughs> it, it's not even like there's something wrong with Xboxes. Really, there's nothing wrong with them. But I've owned an original Xbox. I've owned an Xbox 360, I've owned an Xbox One, and all of them have one thing in common. What's that? I ended up giving them away. <laughs> that's, like, that's what they I have in common for you. I mean, <laughs> I feel that, though. I feel that, though. Like, uh, like I said earlier, I didn't say this during, the, during the, the recording. I'll say it now, though. My Xbox One right now is in the trunk of my car in place of my spare tire. That's exactly where my Xbox One is. I don't touch it. It's a paperweight for my car right now. If you could, I don't if you use could it. get your money back for that right now, would you? I completely would. 100% would. And, but my reasons are different from your reasons. I look at it as from more of... I guess you do too, but I look at it more from a gamer pr perspective where you see exclusives left and right from Sony. Every which way you look, there's an exclusive. Nintendo, even though all they got right now is the Switch, the Switch is fire in some ways. The Switch, they, the Switch got some bangers. They have hey, exclusives, right? Can you cannot say, <laughs> you cannot say the same about Xbox, right? Xbox had what? Cuphead, okay. Yeah, Cuphead was good. That was dope. All right, we beat it. Now, what's next? <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. You know what I mean? So if, if there's no replayability or nothing to keep me going back to this console, why should I do it? That, plus, there's already talks about the Xbox Series X video games being cross-compatible with PC. What's the point in me buying an Xbox Series X if I can play the game on PC? And I could just, if I can just buy the game on PC, why am I buying this console? For what? There's no reason. I don't because see it. Bells and whistles are fun. <laughs> <laughs> Bells people and whistles don't, are people fun. don't want content you, you think people want steak no they want a big ass pile of loaded mashed potatoes and then on top of that they want a piece of steak like this big for 30 more dollars that's DLC <laughs> DLC <laughs> I mean, that's you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't blame the consoles for that, though. That's more, that's more the the video game company, companies themselves, and you know, we all know EA is good for that shit. Like even even right now, I don't know if you know this, Wolf. Uh, EA and Respawn just released a DLC today for Apex Legends, which is a free to play game, but the DLC is twenty dollars. <laughs> the game is free to play. You can download the game and play the game for free, but. The DLC is twenty dollars. But those of you that don't know, cost. today is uh, what May? I think it's May, May twenty sixth. And as of today, I Call of Duty. I don't be paying attention to the dates, bro. I don't pay attention to dates, holidays, birthdays, none of that shit. None of that shit make no never mind to me. I just wake up in the morning and do shit. That's it. So uh, as of today, 
Hell yeah, I just be doing shit. So as of today, uh, Call of Duty World War Two is free in the PlayStation Store for uh, the rest of the month into next month. It is the free to play game for PlayStation Plus. But the DLC. But the DLC you gotta pay for. <laughs> the DLC you gotta pay for. Hey, Black Metal, you just been sitting in the background for a minute. You got anything to say on this or what? Yeah, I mean, for my for my my idea of it, um, between the Xbox and the uh, PlayStation, the new new generation consoles, um, I think that uh, PlayStation's gonna win. I mean, obviously, obviously, if you, if you just watch the uh, yeah, 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 I mean, if you if you if you look at the last what two generation of consoles plus. This generation's current console, um, PlayStation's dominated. PlayStation 2 dominated. Uh, PlayStation 3 dominated. PlayStation 4 is dominated. Um, that's as in terms of sales, in terms of exclusives, in terms of um, people. Who, yeah, casual gamers, old gamers, people who play Ataris and whatever they might have played. My dad doesn't even play video games, but, you know, if he sees me playing a PlayStation, he'll get on and play. But um, I think Xbox, I think where I think Xbox has failed and lost a lot of their community was one exclusive. Um, but definitely. personally, I think it's, I think. Huh? I said definitely. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also. Um, even simple things as far as the menu screens and how long downloads take um the the way you interact with the the menu itself is 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 um i don't like it it's it's they try to imitate it's choppy um, it's extra yeah, it's as choppy fuck. it's kind of choppy. yeah it's just not you know it's not it's not immersive enough you know what i mean the immersion for playstation is there everything is there you know, every game has its own little, you know, background to it. It's, it's very simple, easy. It's plain for you to see. Um, Xbox is kind of all over the place. And, um, you know, yeah, they have, you know, their web browser on the 360 and all of that. But, I, I mean, Sony, Sony, Sony has managed to make an entertainment system. You know, Xbox has made a gaming console. But Sony has made an entertainment system. The system is entertaining. It's not just a gaming console, if you know what I mean? It, it, they immerse you in everything that they do, whether it be watching Netflix, whether it's scrolling through the menu to find something that you might want to download from the PlayStation Store. It's very simple, and it's to the point. It's immersive. It gets you in and out of what you're trying to do. Xbox is... Um, Xbox, I can't say the same for. And and I, I, I could see a lot of children, like kids, they love Xbox. You know, it's, it's it's their whole platform is mainly, you know, teenage to younger kids. I know when I wanted the Xbox, I was a teenage kid. And uh, once I went PlayStation and I saw the, you know, the bigger piece, the bigger side of gaming, you know, it made me stick with Sony. And now I'm a PC gamer. So, you know, PC um, I've had all the Xboxes the first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And I mean, Xbox would have been okay if they would have stuck to the the idea that they had with the original Xbox. I think if they would have stuck with the simple menu, where it's immersive, you have a big Xbox thing, and it turns into, you know, that that green glob, and you scroll, you can listen, <laughs> to play your games while you listen to me. Like, they would have kept that idea. I honestly believe that they would have been a, a lot better off. But um, I don't know who they tried to appease, but when they brought that avatar stuff in on the 360 and all of that stuff, they lost they lost a lot of their player base because it's not immersive. It's 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 kind of childish, to be honest. It's kind of childish. They tried to take something from Nintendo, but try to keep their idea. Like they tried to take everyone's ideas instead of being themselves, like they did in the original system. So that that's that's why, in in my personal opinion, that man called Xbox a basic bitch. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> In layman's oh, terms, man, basically, that man said, "That man yeah, said they just white everybody yeah. else's personality, trying to hook you." <laughs> yeah, and they just slap Xbox on it. You know what I mean? And then they use the the Microsoft interfaces, and it just doesn't work. It doesn't flow well together. Sony created it's, their entire. It's a choppy ass platform, PC. You know what I mean? Everything. It's a choppy ass right. PC. It's basically what it is. It's a choppy PC. 
it's slow. The download speeds are slow. It's childish, and and I just don't. It's a PC you know, with no, less. That's what it sounds like. It's a PC with right. less. Yeah, if you brought like a, if you brought if you bought a cheap, I I lie to you not because I I build my own computers now, but when I when I bought a pre built computer, bro, it was just like me owning the Xbox. I'm not lying. The only difference was oh, you build your own computers. Yeah, yeah. You won't show us your setup right now. <laughs> so this is Boy. my show. That keyboard is fire. Boy. That tower, bro. That Shit. tower. Fire. Oh, that fucking tower, bro. Oh, Breaking man. fire. This so bitch. Fire. I, I build computers. You know what I'm saying. So I'm big in. The, I'm big into. Uh, Microsoft, but if you buy a pre-built PC, I mean that's better than the Xbox. And I'm talking about a six hundred dollar pre-built PC with, uh, you know, a ten fifty GPU in it. You know, the, the Xbox is just not, it's just not it's there. Not hacking it. My, nah, it's not. It's it's not. It's it almost <laughs> feels half-assed. It feels lazy. It feels yeah, like they it just fucking lazy. they just they picked up whatever they could, they threw it together, and they said sugar, spice, and everything nice. Yeah. And forgot that you know yeah. forgot to add the chemical X. Yeah, and I also forgot to add this as well. Another thing Xbox did bad <laughs> with their exclusives that they had with Halo. They destroyed the series of Halo. Halo got destroyed, and not based off of other people's sales and other games. It was almost like it was almost like they took everything good about the game and just destroyed it. And it's the same thing with Gears of War. Like I was a huge Gears of War fan. And uh, I loved Xbox 360, but, you know, when um, Gears of War, you know, after Gears of War 3, they, they should have just let the, you know, not the series die, but come up with better content for the game instead of rushing it out because you have such a big fan base for the game, you know? And that's what I noticed with a lot of a lot of games they do now. Like, look at The Last of Us, right? I, You know, Naughty Dog came out of nowhere, you know, and the same as Rockstar. They don't tell you shit about their games. They don't tell you. Hey, this is what we're working on. This is, they might give you a little bit here and there. Oh, the map is going to be, you know, five times bigger than the last map, and, and and it takes them time. They do what? How long has it been since the last Grand Theft Auto came out? You know what I mean? It's been, it's been what, a while. It's been a while. It's been two generations of consoles that came out since Grand Theft Auto Five has been out. It came out on a, on and a it's PS3. It's still and it's still so, selling. And it's still fucking because they took their time and they they created a they they listened to their fans. They add in, you know, they still stay true to themselves, but they listen to their fans, and they make an excellent game. Red Dead Redemption 2 should have been game of the year, in my opinion. I love God of War, and I do believe God of War earned it, but I, I believe Red Dead Redemption was the better story, and I feel like what Rockstar has been doing for years and years and years is, is unparalleled. It's unparalleled. And, um, you know, the same with, and, and most of these exclusives are, PlayStation, I, I feel like PlayStation, the, the only reason Xbox is still alive is because PlayStation has signed over some of their exclusive to Xbox, i.e. Gears of, uh, no, sorry, I, um, um, what was it, Metal Gear Solid, um, mm -hmm. they allow Xbox to get that, because if they, if they didn't, I mean, there's certain, there's so many games that I could name that were not on Xbox originally, and PlayStation was like, hey, we kind of feel bad for y'all over there, because, you know, Gears of War is, you know, and, um, uh, you know, now it's all about preference. All oh, the controller, I like the Xbox controller. It's not even about the system and the games and, and the capabilities. It's about I like the controller or Xbox is cool because my my nephews and kids they love it. You but know, it's the not controller. about what you actually are getting. Yeah, and the I'm controller's track. Honestly, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> he, said, um, he said of the controller's track. You know, <laughs> it is. It doesn't feel. It just. It's not. So, I should feel um, like you got a yeah, brick in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> should a brick. They lost a lot of people, man. They lost a lot of people with these exclusives. Man. I'm telling you, the exclusive that that really hurt them. The interface is trash. Um, that boy not said really the the setup, of it, but just the way you maneuver in it, the sound effects when you go, it's like it just doesn't. It don't feel right. You know what I mean? It just doesn't feel right. It feels rushed. And they, they took an idea from Nintendo, and they took the i they took ideas from Sony, and they really took ideas from you know computers, and um, you know it's just it's not original enough to to be at the level that they they claim to be at, you know. You know what you know what dead ass happened though. You know what I really feel like happened is 
You know what really controls most of what people like in the world right now? Memes. What's that? Man, memes, memes man. I'm t- Look, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. The President of the United States may very well be decided by who has the dankest memes. May- Best console may be decided by who has the dankest memes. How many times have you seen people swap around Xbox and PlayStation in those memes where it's like, Xbox player flipping off the cops, PlayStation player snitching in court, 6 9 don't play. I guarantee you 6 9 got an Xbox. <laughs> guarantee. <laughs> that man got an Xbox. And the memes be okay. so hot. All right. You'd be like, you know what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're done. We're done. <laughs> We're done. We're gonna move on to the <laughs> to the fucking last topic. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Uh, nah. All right, we're gonna move on to the nah, last I can't topic. Be happy. I gotta be all pissed off. You gotta be serious now. All right, so uh, gotta be, gotta be yeah, serious yeah, now. Our last topic is, of course, b- police brutality, and and you know, the midst of this conversation, I would like to give condolences to the family of George Floyd. Uh, because what happened was definitely horrendous. You know, I, this is outrageous. And something like this should have never happened, uh, especially with so many bystanders and people trying to correct the situation. Um, albeit the four, I don't know if you guys knew it was four, but there was four police officers that were fired earlier today because of the situation. Uh, what do you guys think of that? All right, so let me it's start this dark. one off. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start this one off because um, I've 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 been. This is probably gonna be one of my um, major talking points. Not police brutality in itself, but the um, injustices and wrong and and the wrong treatments of you know America versus black. All right, so um, the issue that I have with police brutality. Um, and I won't even say just just for black people at this point, because I don't want to create a divide of, um, you know, my my Caucasian counterparts or people who may watch this video. Because right. at the end of the day, race matters to black people, but to everyone else, it, it, it's not a major thing. So we're talking about police brutality, right? If I, I can go down an entire list of people who have died from injustice, unjust reasons from police brutality um and it's it's sickening and it's uh it's gone beyond the point of return honestly i i feel as if um um there needs to be a police reform the training for police officers need to change and uh people need to start standing up for for each other and themselves um it's uh I don't know. It bothers me, you know, to know that I could go outside and be killed uh, for absolutely nothing, honestly, with for disagreement, not even disagreement or just looking a certain way or being in the wrong place at the wrong time just because of the color of my skin. Right. And um, it's uh, it's it's disheartening. And um, it's almost like it's it's almost like at this point the police or the, you know, the powers that be are taunting, are taunting, you know, um, our people. And uh, I just feel like there's not being enough done in the black community to, to stop it from happening. Um, you know, shout out to the people that were there, that were there in the video that tried to fight, fight for him. And, you know, everybody has a different way that they'll handle it. Some people are fight, some people are flight, some people are, you know, um, disheartening from doing anything. But I, I feel that it's gotten so far um, that something something needs to drastically change before um, it ends in violence. And that's the, that's the point I think we're at. It's either going to be reform or violence. And uh, honestly, it may, need to, it may need to go to that. It may need to go to violence. It may need to go to violence because me personally, as a father and as a, as a black man, if something of that situation was to happen to me, you're not just going to, it's not happening like that. 
it's not happening like that. And uh, there's, you know, we have all of these groups and people that say that they have the black people's interest, you know, best best interest at heart. But I don't, I don't see it. I don't, you know, I don't. I'm not, you know, saying they don't do anything. But I don't see the NAACP anymore. You know, Black Lives Matters died out and kind of ghosted away. And the community, the communities that, you know, these groups of people that that are part of these groups and that they came from, I don't see them representing you know, to the extent of what they need to. And, um, I mean, Dontre Hamilton, Eric Garner, John Crawford III, Michael Brown Jr., Ezell Ford, Dante Parker, Tanisha Anderson, Akai Gurley, Tamir Rice, Rumayan Bruceman, Jerome Reed, Tony Robinson, Philip White, Eric Harris, Walter Scott, Freddie Gray, Terrence Crutcher, Alton Sterling, George Floyd. And that's just the name of few. That's a short list from 2014 to now. And there's names that I left off the list because there's speculation about um, them having a gun or uh, some reason why their lives were taken. And um, it's getting ridiculous, you know, and it needs to change. And I don't think it'll change without reform of violence or without um, someone willing to put their life on the line in order for things to change. So that's all I got to say about it. You hit my heart. I felt Very that. Insightful. I felt Very that insightful. in my soul. I felt that in my soul, man. Wolf, you got anything? So this whole thing, this whole thing got under my skin immediately because, as you know, as my man's pointed out, as a black man in America and as a father of mixed by bi- mixed biracial children in america i'm constantly worried like is my daughter gonna go out and she's gonna get harassed is is my wife gonna get pulled over for no reason i've been pulled over for some of the stupidest reasons you can imagine and it might not always be because of the color of my skin it might not i've been pulled over for waving at a police officer because he was trying to make sure that some people that were in a wreck were okay and I waved at him and said, thank you for your service. I know he saw my lips move, but then he pulled me over. You know how much of an asshole you got to be to say, fuck a car wreck? I'm going to pull this black guy over. But my, 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 whole issue, my real issue with this whole thing comes in at it seems like people don't want peaceful resolutions a lot of the time. I'm happy. I'm already kind of happy with the situation. A little bit of my faith in the justice system has been restored just off the grounds that these police officers were fired almost immediately. Next day, they out. Don't get me wrong. They're not about to catch me slipping because last time I checked, when an issue happens and you think it's an issue, you get fired on the spot. Nobody ever needed to come back to your job and tell them, hey, the media is starting to get a hold of this. You might want to fire those guys. And that's what keeps happening, and that's what's annoying. Being profiled isn't the problem. At this point, being profiled and people allowing it is the problem. The people at the top that are saying, yeah, uh, you did what? You put your knee in that man's neck. You heard him take his last breath, and you looked down at him while he was dying. Sounds about right. Finish the paperwork and go home. You didn't fire him until the next day. I'm sorry. I don't care if we're best friends. I don't care if you've been my soldier for 15, 20 years. If you do something like that, uh, not only am I firing you on the spot, you will be lucky if I don't lose my job and go to prison for killing you. Because clearly that's what you need. There's no reason to act like an animal anymore. None. Do people resist arrest? Absolutely. fucking lutely Do people run from police? Absolutely. fucking lutely Do people like to lie? Absolutely. fucking lutely I love to lie, bro. But if we I have all shit. rules of... In- like... If we have rules of engagement for people in foreign nations and everybody swears up and down that they're not with that foreigner shit, if everybody has rules of engagement for foreigners, why is it that those rules of engagement don't apply to black people that were born and raised in this country? That makes no sense to me. You mean to tell me if I can, I can legally carry my firearm? I have my concealed carry. I have my licenses. I can put my firearm in my waistband if I want to in a in a holster, of course, because I'm not going to be Cheddar Bob blowing my leg out, but 
I can put my weapon on me and I can go around if I want to. I have a concealed carry permit. I can do that. Yet a police officer can fear for his life seeing me with my concealed carry permit and assume I have a weapon and put three bullets in my back and nobody's going to say shit. One thing I need anybody watching this video to understand about this situation is don't get it twisted. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about me. They don't give a fuck about us. All they gave a fuck about was the media got their hands on what the fuck they did. They ain't sorry they did it. They're sorry they got caught. And I'm going to shut up before I start sounding like... I'm going to shut up before I start sounding like an extremist. <laughs> no, you made it. You made, so, it, you made do you think point. you made a good point there at the end because they, this is another thing. This is another thing that we forget. This is another thing that we forget about, about the entire system of policing, man. The, in the police academy, right? They are trained to do this kind of shit. They're, they, they are not being trained to protect and serve the community. They are being trained to serve and protect themselves and keep themselves safe. So whatever means that they feel is just, if they can justify the means of what they do, right, they'll do it. From the beginning, from the beginning of the time when Africans, right, our ancestors were brought here, we were considered three-fifths of a man or a woman. And the way that they're treating, you know, our people is that way, that we are still three-fifths of a person. We're not even human. They wouldn't even do this stuff to, to animals. You see what I mean? Dogs. And so for me, it's, you know, for me, it's, it's not even the fact that they, they look at us that way, right? It's the fact that our own people look at us that way, that our own people go against the facts of what's actually happening. And what I mean by our own people, I mean the American people, not even just black people, the American people, they see, you know, and anybody that justifies what happened is wrong. I don't give a fuck what he did i don't give a fuck if he resisted i don't give a fuck because in that moment when you had him detained you had him down right even with the knee in his neck and you needed to calm him down whatever situation you may have needed to get him to that point right you killed that man and you stayed on top of him you stayed on top of him and you killed him and you sat there and looked at him right and you even pulled you even pulled out your mace to mace the people that was recording to tell you hey that man's not breathing have you checked this pulse? In the video, at four minutes, he stopped breathing. He didn't take his knee off his neck for two minutes later. That's excessive, man. And it's, and it's to the point where if I was there physically, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't allow it to happen. I couldn't allow it to happen. Take me to jail. And that's the point that we need to get to in the nation. If you see a wrongdoing or injustice by anybody, it doesn't fucking matter who that person is. You see a, wrongful, a wrong thing happening, you take action, right? You take action. We've become in this era where people record everything and say this, that, and the third, but what did you do? What the fuck did you do? What did you do? Did you stop it? Were you willing to put your freedoms at risk for someone else? No, you weren't. You weren't, man. And that's the problem. That's the problem. They know you're scared. They know you, you won't do anything. They know you'll just stand there and talk. Nah, you gotta put stuff into action. You got you to gotta be willing to put your freedoms and your life at risk. That's all. That, that's, that's what needs to happen. That's it. So, yeah, that's all I got. <clears throat> that was good. That was good. So the four officers that were involved in the uh, incident were fired. Do you think that anything more should have happened? Fuck yeah. Do you Fuck think yeah. that that more, was a more. just... A just uh, outcome. No, no, it's not a just outcome. It's never a just outcome when someone's life was taken from them, and the others wasn't. This country was built on Christian beliefs, right? In the Bible, it says, "An eye for an eye." You took someone's life. You lost your career. It's a big difference. You can go get a job. And the only, like, and, and, um, you know, like Wolf said, man, the only reason they got fired was because it was on social media and, 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 and the, um, district and town that it happened in. Now, if let it happen. It happens in Alabama. It happens in Mississippi. It happens in Georgia. It happens in Virginia. It happens in all the Southern established states 
in America more prevalently. It happens in all states in America, but more prevalently in the South. And it and it happens every day. Every fucking day. This is this is this isn't a recording of George Floyd dying. It is, but this video is of many of people who've died this way. This is just reflecting to you the nature of what happened. These these four cops got fired because they got caught. Like well, they got caught, man. They got caught, and it was too it was too blatant. Something had to happen. If this was twenty years ago, not even twenty years ago, if this happened in some somewhere in Alabama where they could, could justify it, two thousand five. Yeah, you know this, this isn't two thousand five, and everybody would, no one would know. Nobody would care, you know. And it's no four four police officers get, getting you know removed from the police force. Good job for the police force doing that shit. But at the end of the day, they, they all should have been they all should have been fired and they all should have been taken to jail. Point blank period. Life in prison or the execution chair. Period. That's that that's the only way that they'll stop. You know, that's the only yeah. way that they'll stop man. In my opinion. Yeah. I mean, and that that's a that's a valid point. That's all very valid. Especially because in in my opinion anyway the United States has been conditioned to dislike black people and further still people of color in general. Like, you got think about, think about the stereotypes that you get from black. Never there for their kids. Always delinquent in payment. Ready to run when some cops show up. Always up to no good. Think about when you think of a Mexican, a Puerto Rican, any, any Hispanic, Latino person. Lazy, illegal, probably an immigrant feels all the time. They're dirty. They got all their cousins and uncles and shit living in their house. Well, when you think of the stereotypes that are associated with being white, good credit, always home when the kids call, helps Jimmy with his homework because he's in special reading. Do you see the fucking difference? Yeah, and it's, it's a lot of it's stereotypes. It's weird. It's wild. And it's because this, as a whole, don't get me wrong, a lot of stereotypes are funny as shit and real. But right. a, lot, a lot of this stuff is just people conditioning the entire nation to be against one another. Because what, what the establishment fears the most, honestly, is everybody getting together and agreeing on one thing. That's why every four years we vote on the best of a fucked up situation. Right. That's a fact thing. That's actual. Yeah, that's a real thing, man. It is. American culture is changing, man. It, it's changing. Washington yeah. might have been a racist piece of shit, but I guarantee you that motherfucker would have been stacking bodies by now. <laughs> yeah. I want to I, I wanna agree with you on the fact that, uh, on the part where the police officers were fired. All right. So in a lot of cases like this that I've seen recently, the police chief and the city government allows these officers to actually resign from them, from the police force. And... I think that's 100% bullshit that they can actually allow some shit like that. You know, for doing the things that they do, they actually allow them to resign. Resigning is different from being fired. These four police officers were fired. Right. Right. There's complete difference. If you resigned, you can still stood. This is there's no record of this. You can go and get another job somewhere. Right. There's no record of why you left. You can say anything you want to somebody about why you left that job. But when you're fired, that follows you. At least. And that's something they need to have follow them. Yes. Right. Def definitely. It's like, a, it's, like a, it's like an honorable discharge and then a dishonorable discharge. You know what I mean? Right. A dishonorable will yeah. follow you and more than likely it'll be a record of what you did to get yeah. kicked out of service. But yeah. an honorable you know what I mean? Or other than honorable, you could explain what happened. You know what I mean? And I get a job anywhere. Or some so and so could get a job anywhere based off of an honorable or other than honorable. But a dishonorable, you, you, you can't explain that. That's on paperwork. So, you know, the resignation thing, yeah. The firing thing, I agree. Yeah, the, it was a good thing that yeah. they got fired. But it should have been in addition to a lifetime in prison. <laughs> For real. The you took someone's life. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's an, and it's, it, and that's, it's that was offense. that's uh, it was literally a murder. It's not like this was, you know, right. this was a murder. 
in broad daylight right. in and front of becomes, other people. Granted, according to, to me, that's according to news bad. articles, yeah, for real. According to the news articles, they're saying that uh, when he was taken and put on the stretcher and put inside of the ambulance cart, he wasn't deceased. He was just unconscious, and he died later on that day in the hospital. That's what news, that's what journalists and news reports are saying. But to, to, to our naked eye, you can obviously see that brother was dead, bro. That brother that's was gone. Man. That brother was gone. He was dead as a fucking doornail. And, and we all service members. We've all been to fucking CLS. We all, been, we all done that bullshit. I have never in my life heard of somebody being having the shit choked out of them and then the choking is what's killing them but then when you stop choking them they they're unresponsive bring back to life after they're already unresponsive if yeah. they're completely unresponsive already it's because you've choked them to death they're dead right unconscious people still respond in some way shape or form unconscious people do not or, i'm sorry dead people do not you're not going to get a heartbeat from a corpse you're not going to get a pain reaction from a corpse. You're not going to be able to check corpse, a corpse's breathing. They're dead already. And that's what's annoying is it seems like there's a bunch of hurdles in place, and you've got to jump all these hurdles to get to the truth because everybody's not only willing to lie, but everybody's willing to enable the people that are lying. Yeah. Especially like, the media. Oh, Especially oh, the media. do the same thing sometimes. Yes, especially the media. Especially the media. Especially the media. The media will put whatever is going to get them more views is what the media is going to spin every time. There's always going to be three sides of the story. There's going to be your side, their side, and the truth. And the media loves hiding that truth side to decide which side between yours and theirs is the more entertaining, and then that's the one they send out. All right. Just like how they cut and clip videos to suit their own agenda. Yeah, and it's ridiculous. It, and it, it fucks up the whole justice system is what they don't seem to get because that mental conditioning, that's what's pushing Americans to be like, oh, well, he deserved it because of X. He deserved it because of Y. I, cannot, I can't think of a reason where it's like, okay, you just deserve to die. Yet there are hundreds of people on the Internet every day commenting on these videos on why you deserve to die because that police officer needs to go home to his family that night. And it's, it's ridiculous because you can't even – I cannot say the words out loud, I am cool with killing a cop. I say that out loud right now. You're com you might have just got a couple comments just now, my guy, because I'm cool with killing a cop. Sounds fucked up, but it really just means I'm cool with defending myself. If you're arresting me for shits and giggles or you're harassing me, I – I didn't do anything to you. I haven't fucked anything up. I haven't broken any laws. You're not going to sit here and harass me because you feel like it. And that comply or die mentality that Americans happen to have, a lot of them, a lot of them more privileged anyway, they have this idea of if you just do what he wants, if you just do what he wants, you'll get out of it fine. I'm going to give you a scenario, and it's going to be completely fake. Cop pulls up beside your car. Pulls up behind you, pulls you up. He says, sir, let me see your license and registration. You comply. He says, get out of the car. You comply. He says, turn around, put your hands behind your back. You comply. He says, all right, now come over here and sit on the curb while I run your shit. You comply. Now that cop comes back, he unzips his pants, he flops his dong out, and he says, okay, now suck my dick. Guess what? Your chances of not sucking a dick that night are fucking zero because you're already handcuffed like a fucking dumbass. Somebody tell me I'm wrong. That's deep. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. I was not <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> Does anyone but... see a method by which you cannot suck a dick in that situation? Does anybody see a method of not sucking a dick in that situation? You see that? If you yeah, I was about to say, see, now you're fighting, now you're... Uh... Uh, assaulting a police officer, uh, resisting arrest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I had to say completely made up story because it's not. It's not a made up story. Look it up. It happens quite frequently. You know what I mean? People get arrested. Yeah. There was an MP out in Fort Bragg once that raped like 19 dudes. 
He was handcuffing these dudes and then just fucking the shit out of them because they were drunk off their ass. They were getting the drunk and disorderly. And when they got booked, guess what? You got a drunk and disorderly. Who's going to believe your drunk ass over a cop? Actual factual. Actual factual. Something to think about. Well, by the way, I just want to go on record saying I would not suck the dick. He would have to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go on record because I, no, I have no doubt in my mind my wife is watching this video right now. She's like, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to kill me. Yeah. Uh it's out, it's out of hand, man. You know, and I'm I'm not gonna say white officers, black officers, you know, anything it, that doesn't matter. The police force in general, man, they think that they're the United States military, man. You know what I mean? And they treat us like like you know, you know, the United it's States. Urgent. You know, yeah. You know, and for me, it's like we're not even the citizens of America, man. We citizens of another country. That's that we that that we've came here and you know, didn't help build it. Like, we're foreigners. And, you know, it, you know, it goes back It goes back to my philosophy, man. The Marcus Garveys and the, and the Malcolm X's, man, they said it right, man. You can't make something right that was built on, on the backs of our people. And, you know, you, you can't justify it and, and expect, you know, for you to have rights when that's, this was never intended for you to have. None of this shit that we have was intended for us to have. So you can't expect to be treated justfully and right, you know, when from, from the, I can go on. A, I can go on a comment on a video today on Facebook and somebody will say, well, you don't have to be here. Go back to Africa. You know, that's the mentality. And it's never going to change. It's never going to change, man. And, you know, shout out to, you know, all the other races and all the issues that y'all y'all have dealt with. But this is ours. And until we get our 40 acres in the mule with justice, I won't stop talking about it you know we haven't no got swamp, it we haven't man, neither y'all ain't getting us twice yeah give me my 40 acres in the mule i don't need 40 acres in the mule give me a 700 credit score and have your police treat me like i'm a human being that's all i need you know what i mean like it's not much to ask man just treat us like human beings you know and it's not it's not happening you know what i mean and that's that's my issue at the end of the day is that we're not even being treated like human beings and it, and, it, and it must stop. It has to stop. And I won't stop talking about topics like this and things that is nature until it stops. You know. Wolf, you got anything to say? I mean, I think we kind of covered the whole thing. That ended up being a really long segment because fucking it was just like it just comes pouring out. And yeah. that's something that we really got to think about is like when you're because for for a person of color, for a black person, for for me, because I can't speak for all black people. I can't. I don't know what all black people been through. All I know is what I've done, what I've been through. And fucking when we speak on stuff like this, we speak from a place of hurt. We sound <sighs> angry, sound aggressive. We sound fucking fed up because it's, it's from a place of hurt. It's from a place of. You'll swear up and down you got my back, but as soon as the color of my skin comes into being a factor, you no longer have my back. As soon as it comes down to who's going to be the one to get the, to get the 700 credit score, who's going to be the one to get the nice house, who's going to be the one to stay out of jail, who's going to be the one to, you know, who's, who's going to be the first hired, the, the last hired, first fired in your, in your AO. And a lot of people don't even try and hide their, their blatant racism anymore. A lot of people don't even try to hide it. Like, how many, how many times have you seen somebody just give you a, a dirty-ass look for no reason? You've done nothing to them. They just look at you like, you, like, like your presence disgusts them. I see it pretty often. Me and my wife get it. Me and my wife get it all the time. I take her to a restaurant or something. I got people looking at me. I and I'm not putting it all on white folks neither. So if your black ass sitting there thinking that, shut up. Nah, fuck it. Yeah, not you, dickhead. The people on the video. He looked up like motherfucker. You talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> but the there black people do it too. Black black people and Hispanics. When me and my wife got married, 
when we started our life together, we started our life just off of love. I didn't care that she was Latina. She didn't care that I was black. All I cared about was you're the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. I love you. And we can't go in the street yeah. without catching dirty ass looks from white people, black people, and Hispanic people. Because they all think we should stick to our own kind. Right. Like we ain't and all it's not an everybody already. thing. Exactly. And like it's not an everybody all, thing. I'm gonna make what they, this, what I'm they make say in the South? I'm a, go ahead. Go ahead. What's the say? What they, what they say in the South? They say a, a hit dog hollers. Mm-hmm. Those be the worst. Those be the ones. The ones that hit you with, oh, yeah, you know, that's not true. That's not real. I don't do this. Anybody who just jumps in your face and says, well, I'm different than them, they're not fucking different. That's the it doesn't work with relationships. It, does, it doesn't work with relationships. It doesn't work with racism. If they say, I'm right. not like that, I'm not like them. Nah, my guy, you are exactly like them. Because you know exactly right. what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> Facts. Hey, I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make this last point. And please add this in. Add this shit in because this is very important. All right, to all of these um, civil rights activists, the Reverend Al Sharpton's, and um, the uh, Dr. Umar Johnson's, y'all are some fucking liars. All right. The black community don't need to listen to y'all anymore. At all. Okay? They don't need to listen to y'all any fucking more. Your false promises. I don't give a fuck what you did in the 60s, 70s, 80s. I don't give a fuck what you did yesterday. I see your actions, and I see right through that shit. All right? What's At the end of the day, you, you, guys are supposed to, you guys are supposed to be in a position to where you're leading the forward movement of the black idea that we deserve better treatment, and you're not doing it. You're not doing it, you're failing. Dr. Umar Johnson, you are lying to the kids, and you're lying to the next generation. Reverend Al Sharpton, you already failed. You just need to go on somewhere about your life. All right, and I left some people out. I don't mean to single y'all two individuals out, but y'all are the reason why this shit continues to happen, because you're cooning. You're cooning right now. Oof, the motherfucker. Oof. But that's it for me. All right. That's going to be the end of our show, of our video. Uh, wherever this video goes, I hope you guys send a like. Make sure you comment in the comment section. We want to hear your thoughts and your opinions on the topics that we discussed here. And uh, see you for the next one.